Welcome to the Potter Blog site. On December 6, we broke the news via Twitter that the most recent H7N9 victim in Hong Kong likely acquired his infection at the Toon Moon Hospital. And what's been interesting since we've uh, pointed that out is that uh, the Hong Kong authorities seem to be dead set against acknowledging that. And we find this concerning let me zoom in just here just a little bit. We find this concerning because the math of the situation clearly points to the hospital as the likely infection source. Now, assuming that the public health authorities in Hong Kong are not incompetent, the situation likely means the authorities are hiding something. That is what we find concerning. Well, let's just step through the math of this infection here really quick. based on previously known H7N9 infections, it has been reported in the Lancet that the most likely time to H7N9 symptom onset is 2.4 days. The mean time to symptom onset is 3.1 days with a standard deviation of 1.4 days. So again, and we'll explain this just in a hair more detail in a minute and show you the graphs. But the most likely time to H7 on H7N9 on symptom onset is 2.4 days. Now here's what we know about Toon Moon Hospital. Three days after entering the hospital, the 80-year-old male tested positive for H7N9. Currently, this hospital is having infection control difficulties as evidenced by an outbreak of vancomycin-resistant enterococci. Thirdly, from November 27th to November 30th, the hospital was treating a 36-year-old female H7N9 patient. Uh, this patient apparently, according to internal hospital documents, this is the first patient, actually tested positive on a quick test approximately November 28th for H7N9. Fast forward to the 3rd of December, the 80-year-old male went to the hospital in Hong Kong for weakness related to heart problems and diabetes. He had no flu symptoms or fever. Moreover, he had no exposure to live chickens or other known H7N9 sources. In other words, this individual's only direct source of H7N9, his only geographic closeness to it, is this hospital. Fifth, another exposed patient at this hospital has developed flu symptoms and fever as of today. Sixth, a healthcare worker at this hospital has also developed flu-like symptoms. Now we have all the source links for this information uh, listed here. But let's uh, look first at the math of H7N9 infections. Let's in here a little bit. And what we have here, and this is from the Lancet, and again, there's a link in our uh, on our web page. And we have here a, a graph that shows days from infection to illness onset, both for H7N9 influenza, which is the blue line, and H5N1 influenza, which is the red line. Now, at the bottom here, this bottom line is the number of days from infection onset from infection to illness onset and the vertical line here is the density. This measures the uh, basically uh, the likelihood of uh, onset at any at that any particular time period. So if we look at this chart in the blue here, the mean time, sorry not the mean time, the most likely period, the highest point on this graph is approximately 2.4 days. So 2.4 days after infection is the most likely time period for symptoms onset to begin for H7N9 influenza based on past measurements. Now, the mean time is 3.1 days, which is approximately right here. Now, what that means is that at 3.1 days after infection on after infection 50 percent of all patients will develop symptoms within 3.1 days of infection onset 
that's what the mean time means. Uh, physically on this chart what it means is, is if you draw a line up here from 3.1 days and you split this chart the area under the curve to the left of 3.1 days is equal to the area under the curve to the right of 3.1 days. So this is the 50th percentile if you, if you will. And that's what shows that 50% of all victims will develop symptoms 3.1 days after infection. But again, that's not the most likely time. The most likely time is the highest point on this chart, which is approximately 2.4 days. So we have this victim who's in the hospital in Hong Kong, and the authorities are doing all they can to blame it on the mainland. And you have to ask yourself why. They're not even mentioning that this thing is likely hospital acquired. Now given the fact that there's another individual who's, who's been exposed and has fever, we expect another laboratory confirmation to come out of that individual Monday or Tuesday. Uh, the first person in this hospital had it supposedly tested negative twice, although internal, internal emails indicate that she only tested negative the first time, but did test positive the second time on a quick test. What this tells us is the authorities don't want the public to know that it is spreading human to human. Why don't they want people to know that it's coming from Hong Kong? Maybe it's to save face. Maybe it's for economic reasons. Or maybe they're afraid that when the people in Hong Kong find out what's going on, they're going to run like lemmings into the sea and be uncontrollable. I doubt if that'll happen. Most people are rational to some extent. Be aware.